Hey folks, welcome back to the Artificial Life Advanced Class. It's T-1. Check this out. Potential grandchildren zero. Yeah, we're not quite there. We made uh, a ton of progress, so uh, that's what we're going for. The idea is we're going to grow the thing up, get everything packed down tight enough. That's part of what we're having problem with, and then cut the diamond four ways with two kids and two leftover bits. We'll see what they're going to be uh, somewhere down the road. Reproduce by cutting diamonds. We're close, but we're not there. Um, okay, so the goals for this time was program diamond cutting. And <laughs> I'm giving myself a plus and minus. It doesn't say program diamond cutting that works. Uh, uh, I was also supposed to finish the forward to companion and carrying the book uh, manuscript from my dad. I actually kind of did. Uh, have some fun. This uh, ancestor stuff was pretty mind twisting, um, but uh, I'm kind of pleased with how it's seeming like maybe it's going to come out. I want to spend most of the time actually today talking about little bits and pieces of that. So yeah, uh, had some fun. All right, timeline. So uh, the big hole in it was this diamond cutting, and then you can see we've made progress on that. Uh, uh, I'm going, you know, sort of orange on those because they're not really working yet. Uh, but I, I was working on both, trying to get the diamond uh, to actually cut in some reasonable way. There's a big problem, which is, you know, the very last step of separating the, the two kids, the left daughter and the right daughter, uh, uh, it, there's no real way to synchronize it because, you know, the, the left daughter is being controlled from the center of the left daughter, the right daughter is being controlled from the center of the right daughter, and the cut is happening in the middle. Those things are many sites away from each other. They're, they cannot happen strictly synchronized no matter how hard you try. So uh, we shall see. Uh, uh, all right uh the diamond life cycle so back in july this was the original plan start with a a mother and let it grow big this oogly in the middle was the ancestor code somehow move the code out of the way so that we could then make a copy of it and then do it and this is you know been the plan all along it, and you know, we're, we're getting close i cleaned up this diagram i made a proper life cycle figure uh, where, you know, we've got the diamond with a code in it. We move the code to the left, so and that code will become the right the left daughter, then copy it over to the right, and then finally somehow cut them, split them in half. Now, I actually did not move the code to the left. Instead, I made a copy of the ancestor code over to the left and then erased the code in the center because I couldn't really figure out a good way to move it. We'll see. I mean, so this ends up meaning that the co the code gets copied twice for every reproduction, even though it's not strictly necessary. I'm really caring a lot less about efficiency these days. You know, it's funny. You care about efficiency if you're sitting and paying attention to something. But if you want, just walk away and come back tomorrow and have stuff happen, like your garden has growing. What you want is not efficiency, but robustness. And that's what we're doing here. Okay, the ancestor code loop. You get that picture of going around and around, the mother, the left daughter, the right daughter, and then there's two of them. <laughs> and the code follows that exact pattern. 
This is the current Ancestor code. It's 16 instructions long, which is ridiculously tiny compared to like the von Neumann replicator, which was like, uh, uh, because, but again, this is a completely different spirit. Each of these, uh, and rather than thinking about this as a tiny little instruction, like add one to a register, each of these instructions is essentially a process that's capable of doing a whole bunch of stuff until something that goes outside of its uh, uh, expertise comes up and then it moves on to the next one. Uh, uh, so these are actually just the names of the, uh, the variables that I got to do it. These are configured things. But the point is, is that all of these instructions in the first group, they run in the mother, in the uh, center of the thing. These here run in the left order, and these at the end here run in the right order. And then this last one, this weight cut, the left order and the right order do it again. They both, they both together, well, as together as possible, they arrive at the final waiting point for the cut to come through, and then theoretically they will zoom on in back to the top and become mothers on, on their own. At least that's the plan. You can take this code and lay it out on top of the life cycle loop. And it doesn't matter what all these things really are. Those are just the, the 16 instructions. Uh, um, and they go in perfect order. And that's not chance. That was designed that way. So there's this concept called autopoiesis. It means sort of self-production or self-assembly, self-organization. Uh, um, and there's a bunch of really... I think kind of cool examples of it in this ancestor code uh, uh, as well. So for example, uh, um, this SL instruction up here, it stands for send loop. Like it, it's, it's both a loop in the sense that it sends codons one at a time, but it's also a loop in the sense that it sends the entire loop of program code, which is arranged in a circle. Uh, um, and it sends it down to the left daughter, and the left daughter has a send loop in it as well that sends it to the right daughter, and so on. Uh, now, there's a bit of a trick here because uh, the actual, well, may, let, me, let me go on and then circle back to this uh, on the next slide. So, you know, okay, that's great. Uh, computers sending uh, software to each other, sure, we understand that. But it's more complicated than that, right? Because we have to essentially create the hardware. We have to create the receiver that's going to get the code, and that's what this is about. These, uh, these BCs, uh, again, doesn't really matter what it is. These are the things that build the construction arm. And the last step in that construction arm going across the thing is to create a diamond sequencer endpoint far away at the end of the construction arm, looking back with its, I'm ready to execute whatever you throw at me. What is, so it's just there, it'll take one instruction, and that one instruction has to be enough to get things going. So what we need to do is, number one, we need to build uh, the daughter, we have to build the processor, build the, the, the uh, hardware, and then we have to send software down, and that's what this trick is all about. The first instruction through the pipe is an RL, which is a receive loop. So the send loop is going to send codons down, but only it's only going to work because the first instruction that we sent to this brand new processor was learn how to be a receive loop. And the same thing happens down here. Uh, here comes a new endpoint being created for the uh, right daughter. And here comes the RL instruction. The send loop sends the RL. There's this problem that after the mother sends the entire loop, there's more to do. The mother, in fact, is going to erase it, uh, her, herself once she gets confirmation back from the left daughter that it got everything. So that's what these two instructions do. It's a wait and a kill loop. doesn't matter the details. But the point is, is that we have to not send them to the left daughter because the left daughter needs to see the receive loop first but we need to have these happen afterwards. So in fact, this was a lot of trouble. Uh, um, the send loop has a little argument saying, how many instructions do you need to do after you copy the whole loop? And it takes these two and it puts them in a whole nother loop on the side, expressly waiting until the whole thing has been copied back around to it. And then it does that final little post copy. And that's what made this whole thing work after several things did not work. Uh, so you, you can see it there. There's a K, the KL and WT. Those are a little two instruction buffer that the diamond sequencer is going to end up running after this send loop over here says we're done. Okay. Let's look at some demos. Um, uh, uh, okay. Uh, this looks like a picture, but it's actually live. 
uh, certainly one of the things that I did, um, uh, I've, I've started using the MFMS ability to take snapshots uh, of machine states and load them back in. And, you know, this is one thing that we can never do on the T2 tile because there's no synchronization point for all of them, even if we had a place to put all the data. But we can do it here. So here's just the startup. And, uh, you know, here's the loader and here's an empty code on. We haven't even loaded anything yet, but we don't have to sit and wait for it because I've recorded a whole bunch of other ones. So here we are uh, after the uh, arm has been built over to the left daughter. And but the first code on hasn't gone through it yet. I'm not going to run this one. Uh, uh, there we are with a closer look. Uh, um, and oh, and, and there's the the RL. Uh, that's the receive loop just about to arrive. Maybe we can catch it uh, happening. Uh, uh, actually, so the, the diamond needs to grow one level bigger. If, oh, and we, we got it. Okay. The funny thing is when, when you reload one of these things and then say run, it's not replaying something. It's living it again. You know, the random numbers might have worked out differently. But in this case, okay, and now it's stashing away the BCs. Those are the things that are going to allow it to construct the next arm going downstream and so on. Uh, uh, all right, let's take a look at a couple of others and then try to wrap up and not go long. Uh, uh, okay, we got a bunch of these things uh, that I'm gonna skip over. Here, are the, the black and white, that is the, uh, the left daughter is now killing the transfer cable, which it, both because it's not needed anymore and because it's a signal to the mother that the uh, left daughter is now fully booted and it's doing all its business and the mother about her business, which is in fact just checking out in, in this particular uh, case. Right, oh, and, and there uh, it started, it's deleting uh, its own copy of the loop, which scared me at first when I was implementing this because like now we've only got one, well, but you know, this is what we're signing up for. We're making copies of these things, we have to trust it, and if it's not gonna come out being right, we're gonna have evolution. So, okay, and, 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 oh, and the mother cleaned up completely, including erasing the diamond sequencer. That means the endpoint is gone. There's no more ability to execute instructions at that spot. All right, no, um, let's jump ahead to the le last part. Okay, so now the left daughter is growing the second construction arm all the way over to where the right daughter's go. This is about the slowest part of the whole thing these construction arms get slower and slower because it's sending messages all the way round trips saying, did you get it done? I got it done. All right, now do this. Did you get it done? And so forth. Because unlike with traditional ones where you know exactly what's going to happen, uh, nah, let's move on. You, in this case, you have to wait. Okay, so there it is. Now the uh, daughter is, is just about to be deployed, uh, the right daughter. And here's here comes the, uh, this is the receive loop that matches the receive loop that the right-hand daughter already used. And that's how the, the receive loop knows it's done. The receive loop comes twice and it tracks it the first time and then matches it the second time. And, and okay, uh, last little bit, let's jump ahead here. Uh, um, DX, that's the de deploy the diamond cutter. And, and <clears throat> uh, where is it? All right, there it is there, it's right in the middle. Uh, it looks weird because I'm displaying the uh, the circles, but it looks better when I'm not. And what the diamond cutter does is it climbs up the gradient to find the root of the thing. And when it's at the root, it makes the whole uh, diamond stabilize. It, it freezes it so that there's the best chance of having it cut successfully. Uh, uh, and there it goes. It sends those two things out, and it's a complete mess. And partly it's just because the 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 four-way cut is sliced through the program loop but it's also because there's just absolutely bugs in the uh process of trying to make a diamond shrink most of the diamond code was assuming that they only grew oh funny how that works uh, um and all right and oh geez we're out of time uh, uh okay so uh that is it uh, next time is the last time. It's going to be, there's only one goal, which is get the whole thing done. You can see how we've got children, but not grandchildren. And that's why the goal has all been in this all the way along. <sighs> Have a happy new year. I hope to see you next time.